There's always debate about transfers. Who got the bargain and who overspent? But can we objectively assess transfer effectiveness? And consequently, according to us, what would therefore be the best ever Premier League transfer? And why? So, there are multiple ways to assess transfer effectiveness, and in this video, we'll look at some guiding principles that underpin effective transfers and how the clubs have optimised them. At the highest level, the best transfers maximise ROI, or return on investment, for a football club. Return here defined as the value accrued to a club, a combination of competitive winnings enabled by the transfer, commercial and media revenue from the transfer, and the impact it had on other players in the team. And investment defined as the total cost of the transfer, including transfer fees, agents' fees and other costs. Attributing competitive winnings or commercial revenue uplift accurately to a specific transfer is challenging. Yes, one can use metrics like shirt sales. For instance, B in Sports reported recently that Lionel Messi's shirt sales alone drove up merchandising revenue for Paris Saint-Germain by 40%, or the equivalent of 60 million euros. However, one could argue that the Messi shirt sales simply cannibalised shirt sales for Mbappe or Neymar or other players and as such cannot be attributed as uplift by that specific transfer. Similarly, we know intuitively that Virgil van Dijk signing for Liverpool and Robin van Persie signing for Manchester United significantly enhanced the potential for those teams to win the league. But can we definitively quantify their individual contributions in making that happen? A different and perhaps more obvious way to look at value accrued for a transfer is to track that player's market value. As reported by sources such as Transfermarkt or the CIES Football Observatory. An extension of this would be to also look at the impact that a player has had on market values of other players on the team. And this is how we'll proceed. On investment, we'll begin by outlining some factors that drove the cost of a transfer and how clubs have managed them down intelligently. Firstly, the age of the player. So scouting has never been more important in driving transfer effectiveness and signing high potential young players early has enabled significant business success for clubs such as Ajax, Borussia Dortmund, Barcelona and lately Manchester City. But it's not just about young players. Edwin van der Sar was 34 years old when he signed for Manchester United for £2 million. He went on to win seven trophies and become one of the greatest goalkeepers in the club's history. Secondly, the time that the player has left on their contract. Now, there are multiple examples of clubs leveraging this to bring costs down. From Robert Lewandowski signing for Bayern on a free, to Robin van Persie's £24 million acquisition by Manchester United as the league's best player with just a year left on his contract. To Real Madrid's signing of Antonio Rudiger also on a free. It's become common practice for clubs to connect with players they like, agree personal terms and convince them to run down active contracts to enable lower transfer fees. Three, agents' fees and relationships with the club. A great example of this is Wolverhampton Wanderers and George Mendes. The club's productive relationship with the super agent enabled them to sign many of his high-caliber clients, such as Joao Moutinho, Ruben Neves, Diogo Jota, Rui Patricio and Daniel Pedence. Four, where the player currently plays. Players in lower tier or less popular leagues generally come cheaper, even with comparable attributes and skills to Premier League players. This fact has been leveraged by clubs via intelligent scouting. Leicester City's acquisitions of Jamie Vardy from Fleetwood Town and N'Golo Kante from French club Cannes are examples of this. 5. Clauses and payment structures Arsenal's £72 million signing of Nicola Pepe might come with much debate on overall effectiveness, but it was cleverly structured, with just £20 million up front and the remaining £52 million to be paid in tranches over five years. Chelsea's decision to add buyback clauses into the contracts of sold players such as Tammy Abraham and Tino Livramento comes on the back of some high-cost player losses. Given all of this, which is the best ever Premier League transfer? Well, we're going to argue that it's Leicester City's acquisition of French midfielder N'Golo Kante. Kante was signed for around £5.5 million by a Leicester City team that had just survived relegation and also changed manager that summer. He transformed the side, earning a place in the PFA Team of the Year and leading Leicester City to their one and only Premier League title. He played just one season and appreciated in value six times over before being sold to Chelsea for £32 million the following summer. And the players around him significantly appreciated in value as well. 
Riyad Mahrez was valued at £6 million when Kante arrived, and upwards of £30 million less than a year later. His midfield partner Danny Drinkwater appreciated from under £2.5 million to upwards of £10 million in the same time frame. Both players were subsequently sold for £60 million and £35 million, respectively. Now, the windfall in the season following the Kante-inspired title win was massive for Leicester. Broadcasting income doubled to £191 million from £95 million the season before, with £70 million coming from the club's participation in the UEFA Champions League. Matchday income tripled to £16 million from £5 million the season before, while commercial revenue also increased by £3 million to upwards of £26 million. Despite substantial wage inflation in that season with the necessary squad expansion given the club's participation in the Champions League, Leicester still reported a net profit before tax of £92 million, which was significantly higher than the likes of Manchester United, Arsenal and Liverpool that year. It was also, at the time, the highest net profit accrued in a single season in Premier League history. The closest challenger being Tottenham's £80 million in 2013-14, which was aided by the sale of Gareth Bale to Real Madrid. Kante's transformative impact on not just Leicester, but world football was such that he went on to win a World Cup, a Champions League, an FA Cup and another Premier League title. He's now widely considered one of the greatest defensive midfielders in the world. In fact, his astronomical rise would imply his £32 million acquisition by Chelsea could also feature in this list. N'Golo Kante was, by all relevant measures, a very sensible transfer. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.